Hi guys, Tony here from Tony Reviews. Today we're going to be looking at upgrading the front brake disc on Triumph Street Twin. So in 2019 Triumph upgraded the braking system on the Street Twin and the Scrambler to incorporate a Brembo 4 pot piston and semi-floating disc. Previous to that you would have had the Nissin 2 pot caliper and a fixed rotor. I own a 2017 model's Triumph Street Twin and I must say uh, compared to the ride on the 2019 model the braking is not as good, not as responsive, it's actually quite laboured. Uh, I have actually been in a few situations where I felt that it wasn't responding as quickly or as nicely as I would like it to. So I found that you can upgrade the system to a Brembo 4 pot caliper almost like the 2019 uh, version um, but the total cost of that is 641 euros. Now that's not really in my budget and so what I've decided to do is just upgrade the floating disc element. So I've done a little bit of research and I found out that floating discs tend to perform better um, and what I found is they, they perform better because there is some movement in disc and it's not a solid fixed piece. The pads are able to make an overall better connection over the disc and uh, it's meant to give better braking, smoother braking and less chance of disc warping if you're going to use it, obviously if you're going to grab a good old handful and heat that disc up, um, it's less, less likely to warp at higher temperatures. So this arrived in the post. It's a genuine Triumph replacement part. It's a floating disc and it comes with new securing bolts uh, to secure the rotor to the, uh, to the front wheel. Um, I am going to be keeping the Nissin 2 pot caliper just because I can't afford to replace the whole system. But I'm hoping that this disc will give me a more responsive, smoother braking experience. So one thing I've already upgraded is I've just changed the brake pads to an EBC Double H sintered pad and they give more high friction performance for brakes and you generally find these on larger sort of super bikes. Um, I've put these pads in previous bikes I've got a, a Honda CB1000R and I used to have an R6 and um, they always work really well. So I upgraded the, the pads, cleaned all the calipers out and I must say it has actually improved the performance of the braking already. I've found a massive um, increase in, in its ability to stop so that's great. Okay, tools you need for the job. First of all you're going to need a jack, you're going to need to raise the front wheel off the floor and support the bike securely. You're going to need a 4.5 hexagon head and adapter and that's to loosen the locking bolt that holds the front wheel spindle sort of secure. You're then going to need a 17mm spindle key which takes the front wheel spindle out. An M5 ribe bit and this is otherwise known as I call these star heads. You're going to need that to remove the ABS sensor. You're going to need an M6 star bit and that's to remove main bolts from the disc, a 12mm socket to remove the brake caliper, uh, a ratchet and adapter is always handy for all the above bits and a breaker bar for breaking the initial tension on the front wheel spindle, a torque wrench which you're going to need to apply the correct pressures for the new floating disc and retaining bolts. The uh, front brake disc bolts are 22 newton meters or 195 pound an inch. Before I jack the bike up, I break the torque on all the bolts that I'm removing first. This way I'm not putting excessive pressure on the bike whilst it's on the jack. Once all the bolts are moving, I jack the bike up. I use a car trolley jack and a piece of wood to spread the weight and protect the bike. I use my centre stand to stabilise the bike and lift the front just enough to remove the front wheel. Remove the front caliper retaining bolts and ABS sensor and cable tie these to the exhaust downpipe so they are secure and out of the way. Now remove the front wheel spindle pinch bolt so that you can fully remove the front wheel spindle. Take note of the front wheel spacers. I place them back on the spindle the way they came out so I can put them back in the correct way round. With the front wheel off, place the wheel somewhere secure and remove each of the bolts from the front wheel using the M5 rib or star head bit. I tend to remove the bolts opposite to each other to relieve pressure more evenly. Check and clean the new disc over and take note of the markings for the correct way round. 
Place the ABS rope on the rim and use the new securing bolts to secure both rotors to the rim. These bolts came prepared with blue Loctite. Secure these evenly in a crisscross pattern and finally tighten to the recommended specification. Grease the front wheel spindle with a high temperature wheel bearing grease and clean all the components and spaces down before you put the wheel back on. Tighten the front wheel spindle axle bolt to 65 newton meters and the front fork spindle pinch bolt to 22 newton meters. Reattach the brake caliper and ABS sensor and make sure you give the front brake lever a few squeezes to make sure the pistons and pads are making contact with a disc. A few points to note. Clean the disc before installing it with a brake cleaning fluid. It may have a film or protective grease on the disc which could contaminate your pads. Once installed you need to take it easy. It will take a few hundred miles or so to bed the pads in against the new disc. So, has it made a difference? In short, yes it has. It's definitely improved the braking ability of this bike. Although I think the biggest, in, I think the biggest improvement is from the double H synth pads. And at 22 pound, you can't argue with that. Would I do it again? Is it worth the investment? Well, at 80 pound, it's not a cheap upgrade. It definitely has improved the braking ability. But like I mentioned, the pads have given the biggest performance improvement. So I think if you're gonna make an upgrade, Go for the pads first, see how you get on, and then if you still want to push it a little bit more and see if you can get that little bit extra out of it, then go for the extra £80 and go for the upgraded disc. So thanks for watching, I hope it gave you some ideas. Subscribe to the channel for more videos, safe riding, and I'll see you soon.